Well, what do we have here? We have represented a segment of DNA. This will be a small part of a much longer DNA molecule. And so we have A's joined to T's and G's joined to C's, except for a few little mutations there. Uh, wow, I see an A connected to a C and an A connected to an A. Whoa, I guess the polymerase enzymes must have been asleep on this one. Anyway, that doesn't matter. What we want to look at is this highlighted area here, the area highlighted in white. What's that all about? Well, it's about a restriction enzyme called BAMH1. BAMH1, like all restriction enzymes, is a blobby old protein. And if a biotech person uh, wants a DNA sample cut up with BAMH1, they would mix the two. They'd mix the DNA sample and the BAMH1. And the BAMH1 would hop on the double helix and start riding it like a Six Flags ride. <laughs> Make exactly that sound. Yeah, right. Anyway, what's BAMH1 looking for? BAMH1 is looking for a particular sequence of letters. It's called its recognition sequence. You can see that over to the right. BAMH1's recognition sequence happens to be these letters right here. Other restriction enzymes have their own recognition sequences, but BAMH1 has this one. It's what is it? G G A T C C. G G A T C C. But look at the other side coming back the other way. G G A T C C. Wow, reads the same forwards and backwards. G G A T C C. G G A T C C. What's that all about? Well, it so happens that all recognition sequences of all restriction enzymes are of this nature. What's that called? It's called a palindrome. Reads the same forwards and backwards. And so other restriction enzymes have different palindromes. This happens to be BAMH1's palindrome, its particular recognition sequence. So as BAMH1 is going down the double helix, what does it do when it finds this uh, particular set of DNA letters, this particular DNA sequence? We can see it with this second picture. It goes choppity chop in a very predictable way. Uh, a, a little chop between these G's down the middle of the DNA molecule and out between the corresponding G's on the other side of the double helix. Same way every single time. Is this predictable? Extremely predictable. And so, we uh, once the choppy chop is complete, there are bases hanging loose. I see on this side a G-A-T-C hanging loose. On the other side, in the opposite direction, I see a G-A-T-C hanging loose. And uh, what are those... Uh, when you have bases hanging loose, what are they called? They're called, what it says right here, sticky ends. Why sticky ends? Well, in the world of DNA, G's can be, uh, like to be stuck to C's, A's like to be stuck to T's, etc. And so, actually, they could be stuck back together. You say, why would somebody want to do that? Well, uh, it would be probably the same DNA fragment stuck back together, but for various purposes, which we'll see very shortly, uh, biotech folks connect different segments together and what would be the very simplest way to connect two different uh, or join or splice two different DNA segments having, having sticky ends that do what? that match like puzzle pieces having what are called complementary sticky ends that match perfectly uh, they can put, be put back together, they can be put together or joined together quite simply. Alright, so what have we seen here? A, we've seen uh, how a restriction enzyme works. In particular, this is how what restriction enzyme works? BAMH1. This is BAMH1's particular recognition sequence. When BAMH1 sees it, it goes choppity chop in a very predictable way, leaving sticky ends uh, on both, uh, both sides of the slice. All right, that's it for this one.